to bless. Hills have no weight and tears no bitterness. Where is destiny? Where grave thy victory? I triumph still if I'm glad that each and every one of you here is here, is here this morning, and uh, I'd like for you to take a few seconds to turn to the person next to you and greet them warmly. Okay, as we return to our seats, I just wanted to let you know that in case you're wondering where everyone is, today is the uh, annual church camp out. And so a large number of our normal worshipers are enjoying God's creation on this beautiful Sabbath day. And they are worshiping together at the Cleburne State Park. And so let us also keep them in our prayers that they will have a uh, worshipful and safe uh, Sabbath there and that all will go well. Uh, if you look in your bulletins, there are just a few things I wanted to turn your attention to. Uh, first is uh, October 20th, I believe next Friday, the, is the next Changed Vespers. So if you have a fifth through eighth grader, uh, please feel free to bring them and uh, allow them to attend. Also, that uh, next Sabbath, October 21st, next Sabbath, October 21st, we are going to be blessed with our new pastor being here for his first official Sabbath. So, that is going to be a great occasion, and following that, there will be a fellowship dinner. And so, let us all be sure to turn out and welcome the new pastor and his family. More importantly, if we have not been doing so already, this week, let us lift him and his family up in prayer as we gather around our family altar and ask for God's blessing and leading in his life and in his ministry as he comes here. And let us and our hearts be prepared to welcome him and the ministry that he is coming here for. So please keep that in mind. Next Sabbath of the 21st is his first Sabbath. 
you can look in your bulletin for the rest of uh, the uh, things that are going on. Uh, also in your bulletin is what is called the Connect Card. The Connect Card is a card that allows you to connect with us and us to connect with you. If you would like to, if you have a change of address, if you are new and visiting and would like to have a pastoral or an elder visit, or if you need special prayer, this card can be utilized to do so. Now, we used to pick up the card with the offering plate at the end of service. We no longer do so. It is now in a little table at the back of the sanctuary. Gadiel, one of our deacons, is standing at the back of the sanctuary where the box is. So when the service is over, if you'd like to slip that into that little box, Gadiel, do you mind lifting it up so people can see? Okay, there it is. <laughs> Very good. Just in case anyone was not aware, it is back there. You can utilize that to just slip your Connect card in there, and that way we can uh, be of assistance to you later. At this time, we are going to have the call for the tithes and offerings, and Rick is going to do that. Thank you, Elder Steve. Good morning, church family. Hey, man, that sounded real good. Sounded real good. I'm so glad to be here with you, and I praise God for uh, such a warm presence I'm sensing from all of you here today. It's now time for our tithe and offering, um, and uh, I'm reminded of something that just happened just a few minutes ago. We were, we were in Sabbath school class, and, and one, of, one of, uh, of our attendees talked about tithing as well as some of the other things that we we do in, in this Christian experience. And um, we were reminded in the discussion that tithing, the returning of tithe, and the giving, the free will, shall I add, giving of offering is a response of love to God. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Hey, okay, I heard about four or five of you agreed. I'm coming closer because you're sitting so far back. Uh, did you agree that returning tithe and the giving of offering is a response, not only of obedience, because God asked us to do it in Malachi 3, but also because we love God and how he has provided for us. He's not forcing us to do so, but because of our love for him, we do just that. Amen? Amen, 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 amen. amen. So I thank my sister Nez for reminding us that in Sabbath school. Amen, amen. So I want to remind that you as well and share that with you. Uh, today, uh, we have some emphasis. We've got a bulletin. Let me see your bulletin, Elder. Um, our emphasis today, let's see here. Uh, main emphasis is the voice of prophecy. Uh, and, of course, special emphasis is the Samaritan House. And that's one of the, many, one of the many ministries that this church body works with in the local area to support those in need. So uh, we appreciate uh, your willingness to give and continue to serve uh, and to share the blessings that God has bestowed on us. Uh, and, and as we emphasize those two main points today, again, the voice of prophecy ministry, as well as Samaritan House. So right now, let us bow, uh, bow our heads and pray. And of course, our deacons and other associates will be around shortly to receive tithe and offering. Father God, we thank you once again for you being God and God alone. We thank you, O oh God, for uh, allowing us and providing these means for us to return unto you. Father, you are the owner of everything. You're creator of all things. And you only stated in your word you require 10%. But well, many of us go above and beyond because you are much greater. And we honor you so much, Father, that we return unto thee willingly and with loving hearts. So we thank you for the opportunity to be used by you that these funds may be multiplied to continue this great work until you shall return again. Bless us and keep us, we pray in Jesus' name. Let all saints say amen. 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 Now it's time for our children's story. Sister Deanna is going to come forth. And all the kids, please come forth. Please come forth. Kids, I know a lot of you guys are out, but if there's some kiddos that can come on up, come on forward and pick up some money if you can. Girls, go ahead.
Good morning, boys and girls. Oh, we're all spread out. That works. That's all right. Good morning. I have some helpers this morning that are going to help me with my story. And you can see we have some props over here on the ground. So we'll leave those there. And they'll make sure to pick them up. How many of you guys have brothers and sisters? Can you raise your hand if you have a brother and a sister? Or maybe you have some cousins. Do you guys have cousins? That's all right. He's okay. That's all right, honey. It's all right. You can play with it. All right. Well, today I'm going to tell you a story about some sisters. Where are my sisters? Come stand over here, sisters. And these sisters, they fought all the time. They would fight over who could use the bathroom or who was going to be able to go with mom to the store and sit in the front seat. They just fought over everything. And so finally one day, mommy and daddy were like, I can't handle it. Stop, stop, stop. You're driving us crazy. And you know what they did? They wanted to teach the sisters a lesson. So the dad, well, I'll be the mom. The mom decided to tell them, go ahead and go out and gather some sticks. So the sisters did what they were told. They didn't understand it, but they did what they were told. They went and gathered some sticks. And they brought them all to the mother. Hi. And the mother had one of the daughters bind the sticks up, put them together. Turn towards them so they can see. There you go. And the mother said, why don't we take this rope right here. Stand to the side so they can see. Can you guys see? Why don't you take this rope right here and tie these sticks together? And we'll call this rope love. Go ahead and tie those sticks together. Thank you. That's perfect. There you go. So they tied them real tight. You got it. That's fine. And then mommy had the sisters stand up nicely in a row. And she told them to break those sticks apart. Here you go. Good job. All right. There you go. Go ahead. So the first sister tried. And she couldn't break them. So she handed it to the next one. And she tried to break them. Nope. She couldn't do it. Thank you, honey. So the next sister tried to break them. Didn't work. So the last sister tried to break them. They couldn't do it. So the mommy took the rope off and handed each sister a stick. You want one too? Here, you can have that one. You want one too? Okay, don't break them though. Don't break them with your hand. This might be messy, too messy. All right, here you go. You got one? All right, sisters, stand to the side. All right. And then the mommy told the sisters, now I want you to try to break this stick. So they all broke it. Do you see how easily those sticks broke when they were by themselves? Did you see that? Raise your hand if you saw the stick break. That's right. We saw it break. And the mother said, my dears, if you stay together and you help each other, you will be as strong as that bundle of stick and no enemy can beat you. But if you divide yourselves, like when I divided the sticks to each of you, you can easily be broken. Did you know that we have a father? Girls, can you help pick up? Did you know that we have a father that talks about in his book about breaking apart? Do you know what the special book is called? Can I have that, honey? Thank you. The Bible, that's right. And the Bible talks to us, and it has a special verse about being in unity. Here, you can have that one. There you go. (laughs) He likes the sticks. About being in unity with one another and talking to each other and being friends to one another. And in Psalms 133, it says, 133, 1, it says, How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. So we need to remember to live together in unity, loving one another and being kind to one another. Because when we're separated, it's very easy to get distracted and broken. But when we stay together, God uses us and builds us and makes us stronger as a unit. Okay? Amen? All right. Can I have someone pray for us today? Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for us, the church, so we can come and help so more people can learn about you. And thank you for all the people who are here. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you guys for listening. And you may go back to your seats. And you may keep that stick, but take it with you so it's not on the ground, please. Thank you.
I think y'all look too comfortable, so I'm going to ask you to stand up and sing with us praises to your Lord, your Savior. don't you? What a message in today's world where love fails so often. He will never give up on us. He is always there right with us. This is our Garden of Prayer song, which means that you'll see a little Garden of Prayer slide in the middle. And when you see that, you are invited to come up if you have any special praises, special burdens, anything in between. You can come forward and kneel right here at the altar and bring those to the Lord. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Welcome, Alto. 
Jesus. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Let's hear you, altos. Sin runs deep, your grace is more, for grace is found, is where you are, and where you are, Lord, I am free, holiness is Christ. comes my way when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. My one. Gracious God, creator of heaven and earth, O oh, great high priest who is ministering on our behalf at this very moment, we look to you, we turn to you as our rock, as our savior, as our one defense. We look around and we see all that is going around in the world, one disaster after another, on and on and on it goes. And we see all these things, and we see how men's hearts are turning with fear. But we know that you are our defense. You are our righteousness. You are there for us. And we know that we can trust in you. We can put our complete faith and trust in you because you have always been faithful. You have been faithful in the lives of so many from 
Adam to Abraham to Moses to me. You have been faithful in my life. And so I know I can trust you. I know that you are the resurrection and the life. And so we look forward to your soon coming. We look forward to a time when we can worship you face to face. When we can fall down at your feet and worship you. When we can look up and you will wash away all tears from our eyes. We look forward to that time and we know that the time is near. We ask that you will instill in our hearts your love, that we may bestow that love on others, that we can call a dying world to repentance and to a knowledge of you. We ask that you place in our hearts a burden for others, a burden like you have that we can minister in love, that we can reflect you, your character, that you will be lifted up, that all men will be drawn to you. Father, I ask that you be with those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. I ask that you be with those who are facing a devastating diagnosis. Help them to realize that you've never left them. You're right there beside them. You'll always be right there. I lift up all of those who are sick and weary and, and wondering. Please be with each and every one. Whatever it is we're going through, we know that you know. We know that you, you've been through it all. You've suffered and bled and died for our behalf. We know that you, dear Father, lost your son. You gave up your son to die for us. You've been through that separation of death. And so we know that that you are there to comfort us and to provide a shoulder for us to lean on. Whatever it is we're going through, nothing in the bank account, troubles at work, troubles at home, we know that we can leave it all in your hands. Father, as we are here this morning to worship and praise you, we ask that your Holy Spirit will be in our hearts. We ask that our ears will be open and our hearts will be open to the message that you have to bring us today. We know that Elder Rick is just but a vessel. And so we ask that you utilize him in the manner that you desire. That you will anoint him and touch his lips and touch our hearts. When we leave here today, help us to not go thinking our own thoughts and doing our own things. Let us go here with a changed heart and a changed mind. Let us go out beyond these doors and minister on your behalf. We thank you for hearing the the cries of our hearts, the things that are in the deep, the things that we haven't mentioned, that I haven't brought forth. Thank you for hearing us. I pray these things, and I have full assurance that you hear, because I pray them in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.
that one. Okay. Good morning again, church family. Yeah, take that game down a little bit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I have a strong voice, so I don't need to be up too high. Amen. Amen. It's so good to see each and every one of you here today. Um, and since we are fewer in numbers, that's been mentioned before, um, um, and you are sitting in your favorite seats, I'm going to ask for some help in the deacons, in the brothers around, and put that rostrum down here on the floor. So don't worry about climbing up. I seem to be so far away up there. Thank you. Thank you. For those who don't know me, many of you, I recognize your faces. Um, my name is Rick. I'm one of the local elders here, and um, Pastor Chris called me and asked if I would share a few words with the saints um, some time ago. I said, um, sure, sure, sure. Um, I, I have, the, opportunity, I have the, the pleasure, I'm going to use that word, I have the pleasure of sharing time with a certain group of you every Sabbath in the Secret Sabbath School class. And uh, so those who share uh, the facilitation of lessons with me on a regular basis know more about me and who I am. They know that I am the younger son of a Baptist preacher. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they know that I'm passionate about the Word of God. Uh, they know that my passion about the Word of God is expressed not only in how I facilitate uh, the study of a Sabbath school lesson, how I respond if I'm sharing and breaking bread with my brothers in Bible study, how I sing, some of you have seen me sing, that same passion is expressed in how I live my life as the Spirit leads me. So I pray God continue to be with me and with this thought today. And you know, as I listen to the service today, I've enjoyed it thus far. From the time I was greeted by Sister Deanna at the door until the prayer by Elder Steve, I've heard nuggets of my message all morning long. So that tells me the Holy Spirit's been working, not only on me, but through my brothers and sisters as well. I've heard nits and pieces shared in our comments in Sabbath school through this very moment when Elder Steve finished his prayer. So praise God. Praise God for getting us on one accord. Getting us on one accord. Uh, my message this morning is entitled, uh, Making God Known. Making God Known. It's a message that spoke to me. So I'll be preaching to myself, and I pray that you are encouraged by the message as well. Amen? Let us pray. Dear God, help us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I have a few texts I'm going to use as a baseline of understanding as we establish a, a, a context for this thought today. Um, I'm a guy who likes to move around, so please don't let that bother you. Uh, but let's start. I hope you can read that. We're starting the book of Colossians, the first chapter, and it reads, To them God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of of glory. Our next text is found in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 25, reading in NIV. It says, But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. The next text is found in Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33, very familiar text. It says, but seek ye first, Brother Jose, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I ran across some historical facts that I want to share with you this morning. Uh, dealing with mirrors, dealing with mirrors. Um, I thought it was very interesting, and I think I thought it was very um, uh, uh, it was in line with what I'm trying to relate to you, the thought I want to share with you this morning. It says the first mirrors, and you, you may not know this as, as a historical fact, but the first mirrors were made from highly polished 
metals such as copper or brass. Since the 1600s, mirrors have been made from plate glass with a backing of silver covered, uh, covering, uh, covered by coatings of copper, lacquer, and paint. Mirrors do not transmit light, but what? Reflect light. The angle at which light strikes a mirror is exactly equal to the angle at which the light is reflected back. We talked about mirrors this morning in Sabbath school, I think. It says, therefore, the image reflected is a mirror image of the original. You've heard that phrase used before, a mirror image. Uh, I found here some notes relating to that. It says, as Christians, our responsibility is to share with others what God has shown to us. Uh, Ellen G. Wright wrote in one of her books, renowned author, it says she calls it a responsibility of Christians and the transforming effect of beholding Christ. In fact, it goes on to say this complete change of heart affects not only the spiritual life, but also the physical, mental, and social life. In a mirror of God's word, I see Christ, myself, others, and my responsibility to them, making God known. When we remember that Christ has paid a price of his own blood for your redemption and mine and for the redemption of others, you will be moved to catch the bright rays of his righteousness that you may shed upon them the pathway of, on, to those around us. We're talking about making God known. How do we make God known as professed believers of Christ? I'll remember a profound question asked by a preacher over on the East Coast where I come from uh, many years ago. As a matter of fact, I think it's pertinent that you remember this, that you hear this question this morning. And the question goes like this. If you were arrested and brought to the court of law and were accused of being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? That's one of these things that make you go, hmm. I'm pausing for a minute, let that marinate. How we live from day to day, saints, reveal who we really are, uh, how we relate to other people, and how we respond to the challenges of life that we face from day to day reveals who we really are. May I suggest today that, that this is one of the things that God is most concerned about, our Christian character. Uh, in this Christian experience, our character says a lot about who we are. In fact, not just our public persona, but how we respond and how we act behind closed doors. How we respond and how we act when we think nobody's looking. It says who we are. Talking about our Christian character. God is concerned about our Christian character. I think I found a good quote about character from John Wooden. I think he's a former coach, and you probably know him as a, he made some, some game or something. It says, be more concerned with your character than your reputation because your character is what you really are, while your reputation is merely what others think of you or others think that you are. It's kind of dark. You can't see it. It says your character is what you really are, while your reputation is merely what others think you are. The first concern of the Word of God is not our convenience, but our character. This led me to the book of Philippians. I was reminded of uh, uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, verse 5 through 11, verse 5 through 11. We're reminded to, by Paul. He wrote this out. He says, but let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it what? Robbery, thank you, 
to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Amen. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. At the name of Jesus, those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to the glory of God the Father. Paul write this book to a congregation in Philippi, uh, a first church, in fact, a very special church to him. Why? Because Paul started himself, very special to him. Uh, he, he wrote it to a congregation, a very loving congregation, a very vibrant congregation, uh, uh, while he was in prison awaiting execution. Uh, he wanted to instruct them, one, he wanted to admonish, the, admonish them uh, to rejoice in every situation of life, knowing that in this Christian walk we will be challenged, knowing that in this Christian walk we may have trials and tribulations that we may not understand when we're going through. But he wanted to encourage them to rejoice even in the midst of those trials. But he also writes to them to instruct them that what should characterize a life of living a loving Christian experience. In other words, what behaviors should be displayed when you live this life of Christ? Uh, what attributes should be most reflected when we live this life of Christ? If we profess ourselves to be believers, what does it really mean? To make his point, Paul writes one of the most moving passages found in Scripture. This passage was a beautiful unveiling of the work of Christ performed to save us from our sins. Uh, it is written in a form intended as a song of praise to God. It was a worship song. Uh, it was an expression uh, uh, in, the, in the verses uh, that characterize who God is. And it also demonstrates who we should be. The very nature of God and what he values the most and how we should seek to live the lives with each other as his redeemed. So it begins in verse 5. It says, let this mind be in you, which also was also in Christ Jesus. So from the onset, he makes it clear that what is unfolding should be embraced by every believer, not just by a few people who think they've overcome a few trials in their lives. Not just by a select few individuals who want to profess that they are followers of God, but yet in the back of their mind, they deny whether they can really live up to the standard of being children of God. If he, he wants us to embrace that this is a responsibility of every believer and it's not impossible for us to attain because we feel we live in a world and this life, or this standard of living like Christ and reflecting Christ is too high of a calling for us. Normally, when we want to excuse ourselves from living as God has intended us to live, we dismiss values of kingdom living as part of being, as, as being impractical. Matter of fact, some of us even dismiss it as being impossible. I don't know if that's ever gone through your mind or not. But that sometimes uh, we, 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 we get uh, uh, to, a, to a point where we think it's unrealistic to think that we can live the life of Christ. But here Paul is clear that the mind of Christ is to be inside every single believer. How can it be any other way? When we accepted him, we invited Christ to live in us, right? The, therefore, we should be reflecting his character. It should be reflected through us and to others. So the perceived impossibility of reflecting the character of Christ is refuted by Christ himself. As stated, matter of fact, I found a good quote in the book uh, called Desire of Ages. And it says, uh, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Christ continued. He says, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. The Savior was deeply anxious 
for his disciples to understand for what purpose his divinity was united to humanity. He came to the world to display the glory of God that man might be uplifted by its restoring power. Amen, somebody. God was manifested in him that he might be manifested in them. And I put this in bold because it's very important for us to remember that Jesus revealed no qualities and exercised no powers that men may not have through faith in him. Amen. His perfect humanity is that which all his followers may possess if they will be in subjection to God, he as, excuse me, God as he was, as our ages 6, 6, 4. And you'll find that reference out of John 14, 12, where it says, truly, truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I am doing. He will even do greater. Somebody say greater. Greater. Can you even imagine, my brothers and sisters, when Christ himself tells us that we can do even greater than he? Can you fathom that? Greater than he? I don't know if that really uh, have digested yet in your, in your system. <laughs> Let me get on this side because I, I, I heard that side or this side. Can you believe that Christ himself stating that we should be able to do greater than he in this work here on earth? What an awesome responsibility. What an awesome calling for us as children of God, as children of God. Uh, therefore, I am reminded and I'm encouraged, and I hope you are as well, based on the word of God, that whatever Jesus did, and this is a bold statement that I put down, we can do also through his power. So I submit to you that if Christ is living inside of us, there should be a change manifested through us whereby our natural status of being born in sin and shaped in iniquity should change from the, characteristics, from the characteristics of a carnal man and begin to reflect the character of God. So, you know, we go around and we talk about it sometimes. Uh, we may even study it on occasion. Uh, we quote a few scriptures here and there, Brother Steve. Uh, we even sing about it. But do we know, Brother Jose, what it really means? Sister Mary, I heard you singing up there, okay? I sing along with you, my sister. But do we know what we're singing about? Let me challenge you like I was challenged this week, brothers and sisters. Uh, we sing songs like, Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Don't we sing that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, I want to be more loving. Lord, I want to be more kind. Lord, I want to be more serving. But do we know what that means? Uh, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Oh, yeah, you've heard it. You've heard it. Nothing between my Lord and Savior and I. Uh, anywhere with Jesus, I can safely go. Do you believe that? Give me Jesus. Amen. Blessed be the ties that bind our hearts in Christian love and fellowship. Do you understand what that means for us? To bind our hearts of each and every one of us in Christian love and fellowship. Do we know what we are singing about? Uh, I'd rather have Jesus, we say, than silver and gold. Uh, my faith look up to thee. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean on Jesus' name. We go on to say on Christ. The solid rock I stand for all of the ground is sinking sand. But do we believe what we are singing about? Do we? Do we? Well, what is our motivation? Are we more concerned with how folks see us? Huh? We are so uh, 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 tempered, if you will, that we can't even praise God openly. We're so concerned who's looking to at us when we say Hallelujah. When we say amen, when we express that we love Jesus and want to live a life of that, of that confession, that profession, but yet we're more concerned about how folks think we look. Some of us in here I know are just bursting, waiting to shout hallelujah to our Lord and Savior because you know he has blessed you, but yet you hold that back. You hold that back. What does it mean 
to be a child of God? What does it mean to reflect God? What does it mean to make God known? Uh, do we recognize the responsibility we have for ourselves as well as for others, the impact we have on others? Do we? What does it mean to make God known in our lives? Well, let me provide some answers to us. There are many examples throughout the Word of God. And I was praying about this this week. I said, Lord, okay, I, I, there's so many to choose from. Which one do you want me to use to share, to remind my brothers and sisters about this week? And he reminded me of one, a very old story, very old story, and um, um, one that's familiar. Uh, this, this story uh, is, 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 is impregnated, if you will, with lessons. Oh, yes, lessons for us to take away today. So let me share one found in the book of Daniel, chapter 3. Daniel, chapter 3. I'm going to start at the 14th verse. If you have your Bibles, your iPhones, your Androids, your iPads, whatever you use, uh, you can follow along with me. Daniel chapter 3. I've done my introduction now. I'm getting to the meat. Chapter 3. We're starting around the 14th verse, and we're going to take it to the 18th. I put it up on the screen for your convenience. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the sorcery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, Ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Nebuchadnezzar. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, <laughs> I like this, we are not careful to answer uh, thee in this manner. Uh, in this matter. Uh, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver. I need to say that again. I, I love it. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand O king but if not but if not be it known unto thee O king that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up <laughs> hallelujah Amen. Amen. You know the story. Daniel, it starts, matter of fact, the good segue into this is back in chapter 2. Back in chapter 2. Oh, Nebi. I'm going to call him Oh, Nebi. Oh, Nebi had a dream. He needed to be interpreted. Okay? Through Daniel, God was able to provide an interpretation of the dream. All right? And old Nebi took the opportunity then to acknowledge God. In fact, uh, I found in the, uh, 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 Daniel chapter 2, verse 47, 48, the king said to Daniel, Surely, surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and the revealer of mysteries. For you were able to reveal this mystery. Then the king placed Daniel in a high position and lavished many gifts on him. He made him a ruler over entire provinces of Babylon and placed him in charge of all its wise men. Then we transition from chapter 2 to chapter 3. Oh, how soon old Nebuchadnezzar forgets who blessed him. 
Oh, how soon the same God that he state was God of gods, Lord of kings, the revealer of mysteries. Now, just a chapter later, okay, we talk about the time span between, just a chapter later, he's now wanting to create an image, a golden image in his own image. And so bodacious to say to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who is that God? that shall deliver you out of my hands. Let us be reminded. Let's not forget where our blessings come from, saints. Let us not forget where our blessings come from. Never received a blessing, but yet he forgot. You know, we receive deliverance lest we forget from time to time. So Nebi goes on to erect, go on to erect this, this golden image. goes on to erect this golden image. Uh, and the Bible sets the stage now. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar invites all the important uh, uh, people, all the rulers, all, all the folks that Nebuchadnezzar appointed, you know, uh, uh, high convoluting people, or uh, the bougie people, if you will. Uh, he invited all the potentates and all the governors of the lands. He invited them all in. He invited them all in. And he says, he said, hey, y'all come on down here now, okay? And I want you, because I've erected this golden image, and, and, and when the music had played, I want you to bow down and worship the image. Worship the image. He said, you know, he, he said, come and worship me. I made myself into a big statue. Talking about making God known. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. I'm building this case. All right? Uh, 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 his, his history says that Nebuchadnezzar obviously struggled with his legacy. He struggled with his legacy. And he wanted his legacy to last Forever. Forever. And we all, to some degree, struggle with our legacy. Uh, 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 we struggle with some of the same problems and our sense of mortality. Uh, 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 but let us be encouraged. Uh, our book of 1 John 2, 17, where it reads, The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Amen. Amen. In fact, uh, uh, prophecy tells us uh, uh, that that in the last days, another image will be set up to enforce religious uniformity. A universal economic boycott and ultimately a death decree will be issued against all those who refuse to worship the beast and his image. Right now, we're living in the last days, brothers and sisters. Don't know if we realize that or not. Uh, Matthew 24, verse 6, talk about ter uh, perilous times. Uh, uh, Matthew 24, starting in verse 6, along there somewhere, it talks about uh, 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 wars and rumors of wars. Uh, uh, it talks about uh, 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 earthquakes. Uh, it talks about everything that you see on the news today is happening. It's happening. I said it's happening. It's happening. Uh, so we're living in prophetic times right now. So it's just a matter of time, brothers and sisters, those of us who are studying the Word of God, that we realize uh, that another image will be set up to enforce religious uniformity. I don't want to get too deep on it, but I just heard my son does a lot of reading, and uh, he was sharing with Mom and I recently that uh, there's a big meeting about to be had here real soon uh, called uh, by the church uh, the uh, papacy church, right? Um, uh, uh, what he's calling all, this, all the ministers uh, uh, or leaders of various denominations together to talk about unifying the church. The Pope is calling all other denominations to a big meeting to talk about unifying the church. You know, he, he's a former Jesuit, uh, 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 which, which one of the that one of the charters, if you will, of the Jesuit group uh, is to try to bring folks together, you know, even though he is the current pope. Uh, uh, so that is, his, that is uh, how uh, he is visioning this now, is to bring all folks together under one banner. And guess what banner that is? Hmm. Just something for us to think about. So we must ask ourselves, what are some of the things today that we are tempted to worship? May not be a big golden statue at this time, but what are some of the things today that we are tempted to worship? Are we, even as Christians, slowly but surely getting caught up 
in worshiping something other than God? I, I told you, I was preaching to myself this week when I was putting these notes down. I was, I was. I had to take both shoes off. Yeah, take both shoes off. Oh, yeah, they got tight. Got, got real tight. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, um, so, getting back to the story, old Nebi gave the, the group of people an ultimatum as a motivation for worship. He said, when the music is played, you must worship me and my image by bowing down. Uh, 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 so don't, please don't miss the context here. Please don't miss this here. He said, Nebi set the stage at, with an ultimatum of consequences for not honoring his request. And the ultimatum was bow or burn. Bow or burn. Stay with me. Stay with me. Uh, uh, and then he challenged God. Who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? We must be careful, brothers and sisters, of what our motivation is for worship. We must be careful of what our motivation is for worship. Do we come here with a anticipation to be a blessing to others? Or we come here just to receive? What is our motivation? What is our motivation? What is our motivation for serving? What is our motivation for continuing to live this Christian experience? Here's a lesson for us. Here's a lesson for us. Whenever we are motivated to worship by anything other than the love for God, we are at risk of compromise. We're at risk of compromise. Those important potentates, they compromised. Why? Because they had fear of what would happen to them if they did not obey Nebuchadnezzar. All of them compromised and bowed to Nebuchadnezzar except three. The three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We could give ourselves up to compromise if we do not or are not motivated by love for God. And if we give ourselves up to compromise, how, tell me how, can we make God known? How can we make God known? known. You see, oftentimes when we think about making God known, we think about uh, giving Bible studies. Yeah, we think about coming down to prayer meeting, Brother Steve. Uh, we, we, we think about there must be a gathering, a revival, if you will. You know, we think about we have to bring people here to this edifice, to this church. In order to make God known, you got to be going through the word or some type of study. But may I suggest to you this morning, may I suggest to you that there are different ways which we can make God known Okay, there are different ways to be a positive witness for God. We can make, may I suggest to you that we can make God known not by compromising when other people are compromising? May I suggest to you that we can make God known by the, the statistics of this church being different from the statistics of the world when it comes to marital relationships? May I suggest to you that we can make God known by keeping ourselves I'm going to get deep on you here. Sexually pure before marriage. May I suggest to you that we can make God known if we treat our spouses, those of us who are married, with more dignity and respect than the folks who are not within a household of faith treat their spouses. May I suggest to you that we can make God known by how we show love toward one another. How are we to make God no, we are always thinking that being peculiar means having a different kind of doctrine. No, my brothers and sisters, being peculiar means that you are actually living what thus saith the Lord and what the word of God says. And people will know who we were simply if we did the will of God. You believe that today? Uh, everybody else bowed down as the story goes. Everybody else bowed down. They bowed down out of fear of losing what they would, uh, what they got for themselves, their positions, their wealth, all the things of life. We get so caught up in the material things of life. Uh, but the Hebrew boys stood firm in faith. The story says they would not give in. They did not misrepresent our Lord and Savior. Uh, they stood on the word of God and believed that he would never leave them nor forsake them. 
Now, as the story goes, old Nebby was informed that, you know, these boys didn't bow down. <laughs> Somebody told on them. Say, old Nebby, you know, all the rest of us is paying homage to you, but there are three who did not bow down. So he called them and asked them, did you not hear the music? Did you not hear the music? <laughs> you know, he's giving, in other words, saints, oh, never want to give them another opportunity to compromise. Sometimes we got to be careful in this walk, you know, where we're, where, 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 where if the devil don't trip you up the first time, oh, devil may come back another time to trip us up. Huh? Give you another opportunity to, to compromise on your faith. Give you an opportunity to, to, to doubt what the Lord can do. Uh, you see, saints, many times we are given multiple opportunities to compromise and compromise, compromise what we believe uh, uh, so that we cannot be a positive witness for God. Uh, sometimes old devil whispers in our ear and say, you know, bills are due, <laughs> my brother. Bills are due. Uh, uh, we were a little late on the mortgage last month. Uh, I know I'm supposed to be returning tired, but, you know, uh, maybe I'll hold on to it this time, you know. Uh, 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 we may compromise uh, uh, in some other ways. <laughs> but whatever that way is, he causes us to question our own faith in God, in God, and succumb to constant, constant worrying after that point. You know, we need to be on our knees praying that God give us strength to endure to the end. So the Hebrew boy said, O oh, king, save your breath. Say no more. Say no more to me. No matter what you say, we will not bow down. Because as of me, for me and my house, <laughs> we're going to serve the Lord. You know, uh, I don't know if we can say the same. You know, can you take a stand when you are challenged on every side and say, for, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come with me. Come whatever challenges. I'm going to serve God. Despite what circumstances come our way, sometimes we are perplexed about circumstances and situations in our lives. We are challenged by our economic status. We are challenged, some of us, by the political status. We are challenged sometimes just by living in this world. It causes us to doubt, causing us to weaken our faith. But can we take a stand and say, come what may, I will continue to serve God. I will take a stand for what I know is right. I will continue to reflect God's character in my life. And if our God chooses to do so, the Hebrew boy said, he will deliver us out of your hands. Do you realize, another lesson for us, do we realize that like the Hebrew boys, we can sometimes encounter trials, which we do, not by our own doing, but also by the will of God? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Let's call Brother Job. Think about Brother Job. You know the story. They're having a church board meeting, if you will. All right? And somebody just bust up in there. <laughs> okay? I'm just making it plain. Excuse my modern vernacular. All right? You know? You know? God looked over and said, well, where you come from, Satan? Where you come from? What are you doing? Oh, I'm just... I'm, I'm just kind of just just moving around, just kind of kind of scoping out, seeing who I can mess with. That's what I do. That's what I do. That's what I do. Yeah. And God, not Lucifer, God, not Satan. If you remember, God says, consider my servant Job. Consider my servant Job. Have you considered that sometimes the trouble that we encounter may not come because of things that we brought on ourselves? Have you considered that sometimes the troubles that we encounter is because God referred our name? Yeah, that made me pause this week. It made me pause. Holy Spirit hit me hard on that one. Have you considered that when Satan was looking for somebody to tempt, God pulled your resume. God said, consider my daughter, Nez. Consider my brother, Francisco. He pulled, he looked through the files and saw that you were worthy of the trial. And because he needed you to interview to make God known. Amen, somebody. 
Amen, somebody. As we go through the test of faith, as we exercise what we know, thus saith the Lord. God sometimes allows these things to happen to us to test us for us to be a witness to somebody else. Because I guarantee you, and I was reminded this week, through my profession of my faith, somebody's always looking at me. Whether it's your coworkers, whether it's your neighbor next door. My neighbor always wondering, why are y'all pulling out on Saturday morning? Where y'all going? All dude it up. Where y'all going? My, and, and it could be a simple thing. Now, we're not talking about, you know, going from uh, Genesis to Revelation on folks, you know, at work. Sometimes it's a simple thing. I, I work downtown like several of the brothers up in here. Sometimes when you're sitting down at the restaurant and my coworkers have asked, Rick, Rick, why, why are you just eating that grass, man? Don't you want some steak? <laughs> you know? You know? Through that, I became a witness to them. Just something simple as my diet, how I chose to eat, okay? That opened up a door for me to share with them. Well, I do this because, first, I love Jesus, <laughs> okay? Secondly, you know, and I went on and on and on, okay? Uh, they didn't want me to stop. I said, well, you asked. <laughs> you know, you want to stop me now? You asked. You asked. Uh, 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 but it's a witness, and there's opportunities presented to each and every one of us to be a witness to God. Amen, somebody. So, uh, this is where I get happy now. This is where I get happy. Uh, 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 um, o Nebuchadnezzar was, was so irate with them. I think somewhere in Sister White's books, he said his face became contorted. It says his face became contorted. He was so upset. So he said, all right, make the fire what? Seven times hotter. Seven times hotter. Make it hotter. Throw them jokers in, you know, because I'm upset at them. How dare them at this time standing up for God when I got all my people looking at me? All right? They bowing down. How dare you? I gave you an important position in the kingdom, Daniel. How dare you? Make it seven times hotter. Make it seven times harder, and let's get ready to throw them on in. Throw them on in. Uh, 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 they went on to say that we're not worried about the fire, King, uh, uh, because we know that God is able. God is able. God has brought us through trials and tribulations before, and guess what? He can do it again. Uh, we, too, know that God is able and when he put food on our tables. We, too, know that God is able when he put a little money in our pockets. We too know that God is able when he, seal, when he heals our broken bodies. We know that God is able. And, if God, and God can bless us. God can deliver us. God can restore us. But if not, but if not, King, we will not bow down. We will not because our praise to our Lord and Savior is not predicated on what God does. Our praise is contingent on who God is. And since God never changes, our praise, <laughs> hallelujah, will never change. Will never change. Uh, we are going to stand on his promises and we are going to praise God anyhow. Anyhow. So Nebi says, turn it up the fire. Turn it up seven times harder. Make it harder. Here's a lesson for us. When your faith goes up, brothers and sisters, oh, devil gets angry at you. Oh, yeah, he gets angry at you. When your faith goes up, sometimes the fire goes up. Sometimes the fire goes up. Turn up the fire. Uh, uh, what, they believe and now accept the Sabbath? Turn up the fire. Uh, they believe that at, uh, in turning the other cheek, when they're scorned or when they slapped on one side by the neighbor, turn up the fire. They believe that in letting God's light shine through their lives, turn up the fire. Turn up the fire. Turn up the fire. I don't know about some of you, but that fire's been turned up pretty high a few times in my life, in my life, in the life of my family. But yet I stand firm on what I believe, and that is to trust in Jesus. The Christ. In fact, the Bible said they are now thrown into the furnace, and old Nebuchadnezzar watches as their bodies are supposed to be destroyed. I said supposed to be destroyed. But he become perplexed for a minute. <laughs> He's looking in the flame. You know the story. And he said, well, look, 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 look here, governor, uh, potentate, uh, all your important people. A uh, uh, guard. Uh, I thought I knew my arithmetic. 
You know, I thought I can count a little bit. I know I threw in three, but I see four. I see four. I see four walking in the furnace. Uh, and then one looks like the son of God. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. The Bible said that Nebuchadnezzar says something about making God known. He said, I thought I threw in three, but, the, but I see four, and one looks like the son of God. Now, how do you think Nebi knew what the son of God looked like? We're talking about a pagan king, a pagan king, Nebuchadnezzar. Have you ever thought of that? I know you've read this story a thousand times, but have you considered that? How could he say that one looks like the son of God? <laughs> Hallelujah. It's just getting good to me. It's getting good to me now. Uh, look, look here. Look here. Look here. Look here. When the saints of God are in the fire, seven times harder, when we're going through the fire of life, when we're going through challenges, circumstances, situations, whatever it is, uh, but we refuse to give up our faith, people who never have seen God will see God in you. Oh, I heard three people that agree with me. I said people who never have seen God will see God in you. Amen. Amen. And in me. Because we stood on what we knew was right, what we knew was right. Uh, matter of fact, here's a little quote here I found uh, in the book Prophets and Kings. It says, Nebuchadnezzar understood who the fourth being was. How did the heathen king know what the Son of God was like? The Hebrew captives, filling positions of trust in Babylon, had in life and in character represented before him the truth. When asked for a reason of their faith, they had given it without hesitation. Plainly and simply, they had presented the principles of righteousness, thus teaching those around them of the God whom they worship. Amen. They had told Christ, the Redeemer, to come. They told of Christ, excuse me, the Redeemer to come. And in the form of the fourth, in the midst of the fire, the king recognized the son of God. How does our neighbors, how do our friends, how do our co-workers see us? Several weeks ago, we were having a discussion. Same Sabbath school class, Seekers. You know, I love that class. You know, you, everyone's invited. Everyone's invited. Um, at the end of the service, matter of fact, Brother Francisco, you were teaching. Uh, and a challenge question was submitted to all of us. And I, I don't want to chop it up, my brother. But in some, of some, in some words, he asked, he said, how are we known outside of this classroom? Do you remember that? Uh, how are we known outside this classroom? We call ourselves the seeker Sabbath school class. Okay, yes, the other classrooms, all very good here in the church, is aware of our existence. But outside of here, do anybody know who we are? Are we known in our community? Matter of fact, are we even known throughout the church? If I didn't tell you that I was a part of that Sabbath school class, would you have known? Hmm. So who do we represent? What does our character reflect when we are living our lives from day to day? Who is our God based on how we live? What does it say to others? How do we make God known? So now you don't have to invite anybody just to an evangelistic meeting. Please continue to do so. <laughs> but you don't have to invite them. Why don't you get a pink slip at work <laughs> or, or receive some troublesome news? but continue to praise God anyhow. That's the best kind of evangelism because you make God known when you're in the fire and refuse to give up your faith. So Nebuchadnezzar says, have them come out the fire. Have them come out the fire because I'm confused by the matter. I made it seven times hotter, but yet they did not burn up. And here's another blessing from God. 
<laughs> Here's another blessing for God. Even though they've been through the fire, they came out of the fire, and old Nebuchadnezzar had them examined, and they appeared as though they were not even in the furnace. Oh, somebody need to say hallelujah. Let me tell you, let me remind you today, don't matter what trials you may go through, no matter what circumstances may come your way, if God chooses, he can make you look even better on the other side of through than you look before going in. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I began to shout around my office when I read that. Okay? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Some of us, it's up close and personal for some of us. Okay? We know we have some members that's going through some health challenges. But we also have some living witnesses here today through Sister Lori. She's not here today. Brother Dennis, Sister Lori. Okay? We've seen what God can do. He's able, friends. He's able, saints. He's able to deliver. And she looked mighty good to me. I don't know about you. She looked mighty good to me. To God be the glory. So likewise, I'm encouraged, and I pray that you're encouraged as well, that God is able to do likewise for us. He's able to save us. He's able to deliver us. He's able to set us free. He's able to release us from the bondage that we have in life. But if not, will we continue to serve God? Will we continue to exercise our faith and believe in him? But if not, will we continue to make a stand as the three Hebrew boys did and to make God known through how we live our lives? Make God known. Let us pray. Father God, we are so thankful for your spirit being with us today. We pray that as we go through challenges of living this life on this, in this world, that your spirit continue to guide us and order our steps, that in our doing and in our saying, that we represent you more better and in a more positive way. We want to be reflectors of your life in every aspect of our lives. We know we've fallen short many times, Father. Please forgive us. We know that we're not the best witness at times. Please forgive us. So right now, we want to express our appreciation for who you are in our lives. And I ask on behalf of my brothers and sisters, in the areas that we fall short, that we find encouragement through your holy word, we find strength that we know we can find from on high in Jesus Christ our Lord. Matter of fact, Father God, help us to be more encouraging to one another in this walk and in this Christian journey. Help us to show love toward one another. Help us to realize that we have a calling and an election. And that's established on a sure foundation of your word and on Jesus Christ, our Lord. Help us, we pray, in all these endeavors. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One last thought i leave with you this morning. Uh, a result of making God known found in 1 Peter 1.7. It says, so that the proof of your faith being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. May you be encouraged by the word of God today. May we be encouraged as we continue to live this Christian life. Let us strive to make God known in every area of our lives. Now, I believe our praise team will come up again. Amen. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I did not um, have any specific question on the uh, Connect cards, but Elder Steve talked about the Connect card, and if you desire to um, uh, express any thoughts with the 
ministerial team, you may do so. Uh, matter of fact, anything as simple as changing your address and putting a current number so we can contact you. If you desire a visit by one of the elders, uh, uh, other members in various ministries, please indicate that on the connect card and leave it in the box uh, as you are dismissed from today's service. Amen. I just want to make sure the purple mic is on. Are we good with the purple mic back there too? Letting go of every single dream I lay each one down at your feet Every moment of my wandering Never changes what you see I try to win this one So we I need your rest Mighty warrior, king of the fight No matter what I face, you're by my side When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk when you don't give the answers as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. You know what tomorrow brings There's not a day ahead you have not seen So in all things be my life and breath I want what you want, Lord, and nothing less When you don't move the mountains I'm needing you to move I wish I could walk through When you don't give the answers As I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust I will trust in you I will trust in you You are my strength and you are my steady hand You are my firm foundation The rock on which I stand Your ways are always higher Your plans are always good There's not a place where I'll go You've not already stood When you don't move the mountains I'm needing you to move the waters I wish I could walk through when you don't give the answers as I cry out to you I will trust I will trust I will trust in you I will trust in you I will trust in you trust in you I will trust in you thank you praise team thank you thank you uh, over to my right and to your left uh, our altar team someone will be over there if you desire to have someone to pray for a specific situation that you may be encountering right now uh, or a prayer of praise, a prayer of uh, encouragement. They're also available to do that as well. Again, they will be over to my right, right up front here uh, at the end of the service. 
Again, let us bow our heads. Father God, we thank you. We felt your presence with us this day from the uh, Sabbath school lesson through the praise team to the word of God. So we thank you for being with us and tabernacling with us this day. Now, be with us as we depart from this place, but never from thee. Bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed Sabbath. Amen.